In this section, we will discuss how to insert the shapes for the implants from the implant library. However, first we must review how to mark the mandibular canal. There is a separate video tutorial on how to mark the mandibular canal. However, we will just review the basic features. First, it's a good idea to change from the bony template to a more transparent look. Here on the right side, if you click on the other template from standard, so this is the one that's selected, CT bone. So if you click the other icon and scroll down to the CT transparent 2, or any one that suits your fancy, then you have a more transparent look before marking the canal and actually seeing the canals and the implants a little bit clearer. Now for demonstration purposes, I've already marked the right mandibular canal. And so you can see it very nicely in how it shows up here with the 3D image. And now we'll go ahead and we'll mark the left mandibular canal. So in review, what we could do is find a coronal screen. Here's a coronal screen. And the left mandibular canal is here. Uh, we can actually right click and move this over a little bit if we come away from the numbers. So the method, if you hold the Alt key down, you press it right next to the keyboard, or right next to the space bar, I should say. There's the caliper, so you're going to left click it right into the mandibular canal, release the Alt key, go up to the blue line on the axial screen, grab the anchor point, just left click it, drag it slowly, and as you're doing it, you're looking onto the right lowest screen. This is the uh, sagittal screen, and you want to get the most elongated look you can for a nice tubular look of the mandibular canal here on the left side. Okay, so now to mark the left side of the mandibular canal, we go to this icon up here in the right upper panel, IMP, which stands for implants. Click it, go down to planning, which already is selected. Click M canal, and come across to the right where it says new. This is the previous one that's already been marked. So anyway, when you click new, you get a new uh, canal to to uh, drop in. Now we can change the color. If you want to color code it, simply press the color icon, changes to a different color. Here we'll take uh, royal neon purple, whatever that color is. Click OK. Then we're going to mark the canal here from posterior as we go uh, working our way up toward the metal foramen. So then we're going to bring now the control key in from the keyboard. We're going to hold it down. We get a little light bulb circle there with the arrow. Start just a little bit outside the posterior edge and green circle, just drop those in to the mandibular canal as we work our way up. Now if we make a mistake accidentally we can just simply go up, grab the point and drag it back down into the uh, canal itself. If we go outside there's another way of doing this. Um, instead of the control key we'll bring in the shift key. Hold the shift key down and the shift key, we can delete points as we go along. Okay, You can delete all the points, or if you want to delete the whole uh, mandibular line, you just go across to the right here. Make sure the line you selected is highlighted. Just click Delete. It's going to ask you for OK, and then you can continue on your merry way. All right, back to marking the canal. Hold the Control key down. Take your little arrow with the little sunshine icon, and you're going to click along the length. Okay, and if you're clicking and you don't see the little sunshine icon, chances are we had to go back and click new and create that second line again when we deleted it. So now we're just going to hold the left click of the mouse and hold the control key down, left click our green circles along the length of the left mandibular canal. Now if you wish the canal to be marked so that you have a little bit of a loop coming out of the middle frame, and when you do that, go back to the sagittal screen, grab the vertical green line, just drag it forward, and as you do, you're looking here in the coronal screen. And here you can see the circle. Uh, we can move this down a little bit, that's the green circle, and then we're going to hold our control key, and we are going to drop another little green circle and then you have a little bit of a hook that comes out of the left mental foramen. 
Now you're always free to hit the reset icon with a little curved red arrow here. This will reset back to the default positions. And notice the lines, the mandibular markings are stay intact. They do not disappear unless you hit, let's say, 3D off or hide all and then show all again. That's how you can make the markers come and go if you wish. But nevertheless, the markers will still be in place unless you, of course, delete them individually. Now let's say for demonstration purposes you want to put some implants here on the left side of the mandible. So this is a good view that we can get a uh, an overall global view in the 3D and then we can have our multiple slices here with the uh, CT images. Now I'm going to recommend uh, hitting reset and go to the section that you want to drop the implants in. So uh, again we're going to bring in the uh, Alt key. Here it is on the left. We're going to simply uh, click in the left mandibular canal. And remember, go back up to the anchor point on the actual screen on the blue line and you're going to rotate this line parallel to the level uh, so that you can see a graduated, more elongated look here in the sagittal projection. And of course you're more 90 degrees in the coronal view as well. So it's a very very nice um, area to, uh, or, or a nice uh, procedure uh, function to, to get into uh, where you want to measure. So let's say, for demonstration purposes, let's say we want to put a little implant right in this section here. First thing, let's go and do some measurements. So here, by doing this, remember, the area in between the cross bars represents in all three views. So the area in between the green and the blue crossbars and axial, here in the uh, uh, purple and red lines here in the coronal, and here in the green and red line in sagittal. All of these three points correspond. Now, first let's do a quick measurement. Measurement toolbar is up here. If you click it, open. Third one over is going to be distance. So if we click distance, we make sure we highlight that as a background. Let's go down here in the sagittal plane first. And let's click uh, from the top of the ridge and down right to the mandibular canal, the top part of the canal itself. We can always subtract in our minds less two to three millimeters away uh, when we're dropping our implants. So we got a measurement here. We can also uh, measure here. By the way, these lines, the crossbars, you can temporarily take those off by coming up here to the enable uh, disable cross cursors, just little four black squares, just like a toggle. It puts these on and off, okay? Just like that. So let's take them off for a second, just for measurement purposes. So we've got one measurement here in sagittal. Uh, well, let's measure the uh, outer to outer edges here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's first go to the top of the ridge and take a secondary measurement from the ridge linearly down to the top of the mandibular canal, okay? So we have a measurement there, approximately 13.2. Uh, you know, we can even reduce this a little bit if we wish. Uh, we get a new measurement there. Okay, so we're com coming up about 12.6 maximum here. Over here, we can uh, take the measurement from cross section uh, toward the top, from outer edge to outer edge, from cortical outer edge to outer edge, and then as we go a little bit lower toward the apical region. Uh, of course, this is a dentalis area. And then we get a secondary measurement here. So we've got all these measurements we can look at, uh, as well as uh, here. Now, remember, put the crossbars back on so we have a good uh, assessment, accurate assessment of where we're putting our measurements. And so we have a nice um, cross-reference of measurements. So here we know that we can say, OK, maybe the occlusal diameter is going to be a little bit more than the apical diameter, so maybe we'll put a, a tapered implant in here, let's just say. All right. So uh, here if you've got um, 11, so you subtract 2 from each side approximately. Okay, so you've got 9, you got 7, you know, maybe you go to five, four, about a 4 millimeter uh, occlusal diameter. And then here for the apical region, you know, you're going to subtract 2, you know, so you've got 8.76, you got 6.76. Okay, so you put maybe 3.5, let's say. Um, and then, of course, you know, you got your length, so you could put maybe a 12.3, you know, two, uh, subtract 2 to 3, you know, maybe a 10 or a 9, 9 millimeter, 
millimeter length. So you have the measurements beforehand, which is a nice feature. Of course, you can always save this too. You can capture this and save it to your output panel. Or you can hit this button here. It's the Save Scene button with the uh, curved arrow, and it'll save this as well. So you can save any scene and recall it, which is a nice feature. Now let's actually go to the implant library for the implants that we wish. First of all, after we save the scene here, or if uh, we captured this to the output panel, or even if you just noted the measurements on a pad or just in your head, whatever you wish, it's all up to you to uh, record the particular measurements that you're looking. So when you go in the implant library, uh, you have those to uh, access. Now, we'll just keep it at this location just like this. We won't hit reset. What we'll do though, is since we've got the implant uh, icon already open, we're just going to click from M Canal. We're going to go to Implant, okay? So we click Implant, and we're going to go to New, and now it pops up our little implant library. Now remember, you can have your own library here. Um, we'll do, we have discussed this in another tutorial video, uh, where you have the uh, implant editor icon from your desktop, and there's the tutorial video called um, Implant Editor. Uh, library so uh, you can review that and how to create shapes so we won't get into that at this point we just assume we've already created the shapes we wish and it's just a token library that we, we use and sometimes give out as complimentary but it's not a full complete library but it has different various sizes in it for our, especially for what we're using here it's uh, for good uh, demonstration purposes okay so here I've selected one uh, this is called NEOS and um, we're going to select this particular one and then um, you can see the parameters the total length is 9 occlusal diameter is 4 and the apical diameter is uh, 3.5 so it tapers just a little bit so once we've got this selected we come across here and we click OK so once we do OK we can see our little implant is now um, positioned and we can just left click it and drag it over to the location and then to oblique it we're just going to grab either the star the yellow star or the circle and then we can swivel it over in the, a position that looks a little bit more accurate and move it to any place we wish. Now we see it here in the 3D as well so you have a nice 3D model okay so you can look at it from 3D as well and also if you remember this is multiple slices so if we're moving this around a little bit and it go, seems to go off the screen on the other views simply uh, you can simply take your alt key and press down and you can get your caliper and click right where you see the largest view of the implant left click it and you're going to see it puts it back into the uh, position for uh, the coronal as well. Remember, these are these are different uh, multiple thin slices too. So if you pick a screen, you can simply slice it, and so you get more of a, a bigger view. So sometimes if it looks cut off or foreshortened, it's probably because of the slice uh, that you've got selected. The other method of doing this is uh, you can let's take this off for a second to show you. You have something called Eye Link over here. So once you've got your particular implant set, you can simply click Eye Link, and it links them all back up. Now, I kind of prefer the Alt key because the Alt key, uh, you just simply go up and you can take the anchor point and you can swivel along in that direction. I, I kind of prefer that, but some people like the eye link, whatever you wish. Um, so it puts it back in the uh, same uh, position um, that you had uh, previously. Okay, so that's a nice feature as well. And once again, the purpose for the other views is you can simply uh, left click and reposition it from any of the views axial, coronal, and sagittal. That's the beautiful part about having three views like this plus the 3D. So you have a, a nice uh, methodology of assessing uh, your implant sizes and where they're going to be placed. Okay, so I, this was basically, uh, I went really conservative here because uh, uh, just, for, just for demonstration purposes or placing the shape of the implant. Now let's say we want a second implant. All we do is um, we're going to um, go back and we'll hit uh, reset and we'll go back, we'll bring in the alt key 
Again, we'll click in the location or close to it. Uh, we can click here and then go grab the anchor point up into the actual screen, move it over, and this gives us an opportunity to um, see our next section where we uh, wish to, to grab and go. So um, let's take the crossbars off for a moment and let's go to a new implant. So we'll click new and we'll pick one from the library. Okay, so here's one we'll select. Uh, Neos biomodal for the total length is 11, clusal diameter is 4, apical diameter is 3. So it's a tapered as well, tapered implant as well. So we click it, click OK, and there we have it. So now we're going to, um, I purposely made this bigger for a, a demonstration. So now we're going to put it in position, and we're going to take our little yellow star and swivel it in position. And now again, since uh, we don't see it in the other views, remember, um, let's hold the Alt key. First, you're going to put the the crossbars on and hold the Alt key again and click right on the new implant and so we've got it lined up in three views and then we can make our further adjustments um, and align it but here you see it's that's gonna be kinda of long isn't it by the way you can hit the Alt key on this one and uh, you can slice even to uh, to get, get it in position so you're not limited in that regard so but so you know what this looks a little bit long much prefer to go back to maybe one that's a nine length. So let's uh, show you how to edit this. First of all, I'm going to highlight the particular implant of concern. This this one right here, the second one. It's color coded too, it's very, which is pretty nice. Now we can either delete it or replace it. So if you delete it, it goes away. Let's just show you how to replace work. So hit replace. And then I'm going to go to the library. All right, and now we've selected an implant that's instead of an 11 total length, it's 9. And the occlusal diameter is 4, and the apical diameter is 3.5. So we're going to select that, click OK. Now you notice the same color. So guess what? Let's change the color. So click on the color itself, and you can select a, another color, whatever color you wish. Click OK. And that way, uh, if you want, their the color codes are a little bit different, if you wish. Uh, or you can keep them the same. It's all totally up to you. Now, uh, once we have this in position, again, we can um, bring in the Alt key, click on it, okay, examine the positions. Mm, remember, we can always grab this. Uh, if this one looks maybe a little bit too far on the lingual aspect, so we just can grab it in here and reposition it. And remember, we can also do the eye link, okay? So hold the eye link, and it'll link it in position for you as well, okay? And uh, you're, you're still free to make adjustments as you go. Okay, um, so you have that ability to um, hit the I link, and so uh, it's linked in to that regard as well. Okay. Now you can go back and forth between these uh, implants as well. So we notice the yellow star and the circle is located in the uh, fuchsia colored uh, implant. Let's go back to the blue one. So you just click on the blue one, and so now you are be able to edit over here on the blue implant. Now you can change the the uh, invert the reversal 180 degrees. Let's say you know you want to implant and you want to just flip it around. Let's say you're doing the maxilla. So if you look here, this is a vertical flip. See, so now you've got the star below and you got the tapered part going up top, and that's of course that's if you. you going out into the maxilla. So that's what this vertical flip does, okay, that, that function. Also down here, you could change um, the axis. This is for like the um, 3D, and also for obviously the, the, uh, the linear line. If you want that off, you can simply uh, remove those, okay. Uh, now remember, it's uh, down here, it's implant specific. Now you can also uh, extend this too, see, or reduce it. See this number here? Uh, you can fill in a separate number instead of 20. You know, you can make it 15, and uh, it'll reduce the uh, length of the uh, linear axis um, uh, line. It goes right through the implant. So that's what this, this does here. Remember a few more icons. I think we mentioned this already, but you have 3D off. You can take the 3D off. Uh, you can hide all, everything that you've done with the implants. 
or you can hit show all. Okay, that's just with the implants. Now, if you wanted to hide all with mandibular canal, remember you have to go back and do it from the mandibular canal. It's separate. Now, remember, you definitely want to save your work. Therefore, after you've dropped your implants, you could go up to this icon, the uh, save scene icon. It's right, right next to the CPR icon. Okay, so if you click it. Um, you're going to have a save scene box. All you need to change is this uh, number right in the middle. So you can backspace or delete whatever your fancy is. Uh, I'm just going to call it here left um, implants. Now watch this. If I hit the space bar, see this OK? If I hit the space bar, it grays out. So to separate words, you can either use a hyphen or an underscore. Okay. So there I've used a hyphen and I'll just call it left implants. Okay. Call it whatever you wish and then click OK. And what this does, it sends it back to the patient's list. So when you're back into the uh, patient's list again, you will see where that is located. So actually to demonstrate how to recall the scene, uh, what you do is after you save it, you uh, go to the patient list page and I'll search for it over here. And after you load a specific patient or from the list, then you simply can highlight the name of the scene that you saved and click load and it will load up. And once it's loaded up, you're back to where you saved the scene originally and you can rotate and you can continue on if you wanted to go to the other side or just whatever you wish to do. It's like you're starting a, a brand new study but you're just recalling it from the portion where you save. So you definitely want to save your work. Well, that about wraps it up here for the uh, planning for implant shapes. Remember, these are shapes. They are not the real uh, type, uh, like STL files that you get. So they're, they're shapes from the implant library. So uh, remember, they're very nice to fill in edentulous areas rather than just using a straight volume. So now, uh, please consult your manual. If you need one in PDF format, just let us know. We'll be glad to get you one. And the program is pretty simple to use. Just play around with it a little bit. If you have any questions, you can always call us. And you call me specifically. I'd be glad to uh, help you out. Tony Labiano, a clinical applications trainer. I'd be glad to help you out and uh, just practice some and. Uh, have fun with it and hope that it uh, really helps you for your planning uh, when you're looking at uh, patients who need implants. So thanks very much.